Welcome to our Bloomberg television and radio audiences worldwide. AWS CEO Adam Zalipsky with me from their big event of the year. And Adam, like three big pieces of news, right? A deeper relationship with NVIDIA on Grace Hopper super chip, on DGX Cloud. You have next generations of your own silicon. And then you have a chatbot that we'll get to at the end of, of the discussion. But let's start with the strategy. I think a lot of questions that I get is, what is the differentiation in strategy? with what AWS is doing here, deepening its relationship and reliance on DGX Cloud and Grace Hopper Superchip versus what you're doing with the, the cloud supported by your own silicon. Well, I think our strategy has been very consistent. It is to provide you know, choice and powerful uh, options at all layers of the stack. So uh, down at the infrastructure layer of, of what you need to, to do, do generative AI uh, really well. Uh, as you mentioned, we uh, both have been investing in our, in our own silicon. And then we, we have had a longstanding, uh, wonderful relationship with NVIDIA. We've been the first to bring pretty much every significant uh, NVIDIA chip to the cloud. Uh, including their latest H100 this past summer. And I was really excited to have uh, their CEO, Jensen Huang, on stage with me this morning, talking about uh, an expansion of the partnership with, uh, with AWS, uh, bringing their DGX cloud to, 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 to AWS. And NVIDIA itself is going to be standing up a huge supercomputer of a cloud for their own internal R&D on AWS. So it's a fantastic expansion of what's really a, a great relationship that benefits our mutual customers. Adam, are there still supply constraints around NVIDIA GPUs? Well, they're very popular, and I think it is uh, still remains true that um, uh, there's probably more people who want to get their hands on them than, than actually can, which is one of the reasons why we also announced uh, this concept of, uh, of, of clusters for EC2 uh, for, for, for chips, and so that uh, you can actually go in now and reserve up to hundreds of GPUs for your short-term generative AI needs for things like training models, which can tend to be episodic, and there's really nobody else out there offering anything like that kind of service. Given that's the case, have you had to shift any customers to Trainium because of the limited supply of NVIDIA GPUs? Yeah, it's really not about uh, shifting. It's really about um, customers need different, different customers need different things. The same customer needs different things for, uh, for different use cases. And AWS, for this, over 17 years we've been doing this, has been all about choice, all about democratization, all about putting tools in the hands of our customers so that they can make the choices about what we need. And so uh, we're also excited that we announced the second generation of our uh, training-specific chip for uh, training generative AI workloads, and that is uh, Trainium 2. And that's going to have up to four times the compute performance of the first generation of Trainium. We, of course, have been investing in our own custom silicon for years. Uh, we also today announced that we're shipping the uh, uh, preview of our fourth generation of general purpose chip, Graviton 4. I happen to have one with me right here. This is a Graviton 4 chip. Uh, we're not talking about it. We're not showing slides on it. Uh, it's not future looking like a lot of other cloud providers. Yeah, it is shipping today. And uh, again, our fourth generation. Uh, the power is incredible. The price performance is, is going to be incredibly attractive. And uh, our chips also have incredible uh, energy efficiency benefits, which is really, really important to our cu customers these days. Uh, Adam, if the chips are as real as the one as you held in your hand and they're shipping to the real world, give us some numbers. What percentage of the AW customer base is using Graviton? And is anyone using Trainium, the existing or future generation besides Amazon? Yeah, it's it's uh, I mean, Graviton has become very popular. I don't think we've broken out numbers, but uh, all 100 of the top EC2, uh, it's our compute service, uh, the top 100 EC2 customers and 50,000 customers overall uh, you know, are, are using Graviton uh, for. So it's incredibly popular, incredibly powerful. And uh, in terms of Trainium, we're seeing a lot of interest, uh, a, a lot of folks moving to adopt that as well as, uh, of course, GPU-based capacity. And uh, with training, we've got folks like uh, Databricks and Rico uh, and many others that are, uh, you know, building and deploying uh, on them. Uh, Anthropic that we're partnering with very closely and is obviously one of the the, the very leading um, uh, suppliers of uh, foundation models and large language models is uh, going to be training future generations of their models on Trainium. Uh, on Anthropic, since last we spoke, what's changed is Anthropic's come out and said it's also deepened its relationship with Google on Google Cloud Platform. 
Is Anthropic using any of your custom silicon to train Claude, or do you have any sort of visibility on a start date of when they'll start training a future model on your silicon? So really nothing's changed. Uh, Anthropic has been running uh, on AWS literally since they were founded in 2021, uh, which seems uh, decades ago, but it was only 2021. And uh, you know, we we obviously are providing choice of a lot of different model providers to customers. Um, you know, many startups, including Anthropic, you know, as they as they grow, are are, are going to use multiple providers providers for different things. But uh, I think we and Anthropic have been very clear. AWS is Anthropic's primary cloud provider for their mission critical workloads, and the majority of overall workloads from Anthropic are going to run on AWS. And Anthropic will be training future versions of. Uh, of their Claude models on AWS. They will be collaborating with us to help improve our Trainium and our Inferentia chip technology. And they're going to be bringing powerful features around fine tuning and customization that for certain periods of time will only, only be available on AWS and through Anthropic directly, not on any other cloud. So the relationship is deep, it's strong, and it's unchanged. Adam, will you ever be able to get OpenAI to be on AWS? I think we you know, are going to try and bring all of the models that people care about onto AWS. Uh, we've got Anthropic, Cohere, Stability AI, AI21, uh, Meta's Llama 2 model. I'm sure there will be others over time, and we're just going to be, uh, be guided by uh, where our customers tell us they care about the most. So the other big piece of news is an AI chatbot, finally, from Amazon, Q. But here's my question. If I use Gmail or I use a Microsoft piece of software, I can take those pieces of software and use uh, the new AI tools that those companies are bringing to market in their existing suites. Q is on the AWS console. So does that mean I have to train as a developer and become a developer to get access to it? Uh, no, Q is, uh, we're incredibly excited about Q. All the many customers that have been previewing Q in private are incredibly excited uh, about it. And uh, we think it's going to be a transformative in, in helping to reinvent how people work. Uh, I mean, the existing uh, chatbots or generative AI assistants uh, are great for consumers. And so many of us, of course, have used them, experiment with them. Uh, but unfortunately, for the most part, uh, they don't really work at work. Uh, they don't really know who you are. They don't really have access to your repositories. And for the most part, they've lacked security and privacy uh, characteristics that are you know, pretty much uh, uh, requirements. Uh, for for enterprises and, and, and many other companies. So uh, Amazon Q is going to be uh, tailored and customized to your business. Uh, we've built connectors to 40, over 40 major systems, including Microsoft 365, including uh, Google systems, including Salesforce, Zendesk, ServiceNow, uh, and many others. And uh, Q is going to be able to access those if you give Q access to them, but it's going to respect your privacy and security if you don't have access to a database without Q, you're not going to have access to it uh, with Q. But meanwhile, it's going to make it so much easier and more convenient to find data, to generate answers, to summarize things, to reach new conclusions, and to uh, to get to actual you know, insights and actions. So it's going to integrate really well with the systems that people care about. It's going to be enterprise yes. grade. And uh, again, we're really excited about it because our customers are excited about it. Adam, I know that you're someone that, that believes fundamentally choice is important when it comes to AI tools. What work are you doing on the diversity and ethics side here? We always talk a lot about silicon and product, but what about some of the guardrails and safeguards needed in AI? It's incredibly important. Uh, funny you should use the word guardrails because this morning here at reInvent, uh, where we have 50,000 people live in Las Vegas and over 300 other thousand people registered around the world, uh, we, we actually announced uh, guardrails for Amazon Bedrock. Bedrock is our uh, foundation model as a service um, uh, offering uh, with all those models inside. And guardrails is a new capability which actually allows you to uh, enforce your own responsible AI priorities and policies. So um, if you're a financial services company, you might have your chatbot not give investment advice. Or if you're a utility with a customer service uh, chatbot, uh, or gener generative AI assistant, you might have it strip out the PII or personally identifiable information from the call summary to respect people's privacy. So we're taking it really seriously to the point of actually building in these uh, leading edge capabilities that really aren't available 
uh, from other providers. And in addition, it's really important that we're participating in the working groups that are discussing these things. We're going to need a multilateral approach of government, private sector, academics, and more. And I was at the White House with President Biden this summer, uh, where we participated in these voluntary yeah. commitments around AI. Earlier this month, I was with uh, the UK Prime Minister Sunak at a a gathering where he announced the AI Safety Institute in the UK. We're going to continue spending time participating in these dialogues.